uh, I'm, I'm thinking of that starting five and 76. I know Phil Hubbard. I know you. I'm thinking Steve Grody. Steve Grody. Ricky, Ricky Green. Green. Ricky Green, that's it. Yeah. Number 24. Yeah. Fastest leg. Yes. Dribble fast for one hand, left hand is just amazing. Yeah. And who was the fifth starter? Johnny Robinson. Chicago. <laughs> So you remember that, Tim? I remember. I remember you were a great defensive player, but uh, you hit that shot from the corner all the time. Yes. Before the three-point <laughs> shot, it would get to number thirty-two, swing it around, get to you in the corner, bam. <laughs> for, you, for you guys who don't know, uh, if you don't know, uh, I don't think you made it totally clear, but. Uh, uh, when I was hired here at Michigan, Jim Hackett was the athletic director, and uh, he was the only person that I talked to, and, uh, and uh, Jim uh, called me up and asked if I wanted to come be the head coach at Michigan, and uh, said, you, you had me at hello, Jim. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm forever thankful for uh, Jim for making that call. Yeah. <laughs> Love this. I, I got to tell this quick story. You know, the president and Bo talked before every Ohio State game when he was in office. And, he, and Bo would be in the room at the, I know it used to be the campus inn, I, I know, I forget what it's called now. And he would get, they go, Bo, Mr. President's on, President Ford's on the line, and he would take this call. So one time, the president's, and I'm not turning over the leaves, is in Helsinki negotiating the first nuclear start treaty with the Russians. Who was who was the uh, was it, uh, who was the Russian head? Uh, Brezhnev. Brezhnev. Yep. And and the, it's so cold that you you'll see pictures of the president wearing kind of bizarre hat because the Russians gave him this hat. They're, were they up in uh, Finland? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in Helsinki. At any rate, he he says to Brezhnev, he goes, look. We can, we, we've got an outline of what we want to talk about, but I've got to go, I've got to know what's going on down in Ann Arbor with Ohio State and Michigan. <laughs> so they were, they were sending uh, telegr telegrams, you know, about where they were in every like five minutes in the game. He had to know where we were, and we won that game. And, and so anyway, this man that you're going to get to know today, if you haven't, was an ex you heard an extraordinary human, extraordinarily humble, and the integrity was unbelievable. In fact, this new warship that is up upstairs, they'll get to see details about that. Yes. The new battleship, which Gleaves was just on, is three years ahead, five years ahead of the Chinese first entry now in, in, in a military way in the naval equipment. It's an extraordinary, and it's called the USS Gerald R. Ford. And the theme of it is integrity at the helm, because this man would not do anything without thinking first about doing the right thing. I'm gonna talk in my little group about that, but I, I, I guess as we break into the groups, I would tell you, you're not wasting your time today when you can go all over the world and learn about somebody who was just like you and ended up being the President of the United States. I mean, just imagine that. Jim, yeah, just, yeah, it, uh, you said it so eloquently too, but uh, like President Ford, when I played, started in 82, he would visit once or twice a year to practice. Him and Bo would, would be, he'd be out there on the practice field, uh, whether it was a fall practice, sometimes he'd come in the spring, uh, but he was, he was around the program a lot when I was a player. And then one time, and, um, he, had, he it was his last year, I think, of being president. He played in the, the Michigan Open, uh, the, the Pro-Am, with Bo. And it was this big thing. The President of the United States was going to be playing at the Michigan Golf Course. And I went up to Bo as a 12-year-old as a, as a kid, you know, just uh, you know, like Coach Bellamy's or Coach Clinksdale's or Coach Weiss's, Coach Banda's kids that run, they're always out of practice. That was, that was me. I was one of those. <laughs> One of those kids, and I went up to Coach Schembacher, and I had my speech all rehearsed, and I, I said, uh, uh, "Coach Schembacher, I know you're going to be playing in the golf tournament with with President Ford. Uh, do you need a caddy?" 
And uh, <laughs> he said, well, let me think about that. And, and uh, about, a, about three or four days later, uh, he told my dad that I could be his caddy for that, uh, for, that in the, for his caddy in that, in that group. So I was Bo Schenbucker's caddy, and, uh, and I didn't know what I was doing, and then I was walking across the lines. So, you know, I'm supposed to go get, the, go get the pin. I had no idea what I was doing, you know, just scared little, scared little boy. Uh, you know. And uh, the thing I remember, too, is that, like, the Secret Service was everywhere. There were people in trees. You know, with machine guns, I called them a Tommy gun, you know, one they had in the bag, you know, golf bags with, with machine guns. And, uh, but Gerald Ford was, uh, was a true gentleman, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the finest presidents we've had because, and I remember this too, I mean, 10, 11 years old, 1973, 1974, uh, Watergate was going on. I mean, you talk about distrust of government. You think uh, you think it's bad now. I mean, they 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 had, were impeaching the president of the United States. He resigned. There was no trust. There was no trust in uh, in American society. Inflation. You think inflation was uh, eighteen percent. Eighteen to, got got up to twenty one percent. Twenty one percent. If yeah. I recall, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Justice Department, the uh, distrust across the the uh, the country was at an all time high. Vietnam War was just ending, and the person that came and really shored up the dike was Gerald R. R. Ford with the integrity that uh, that Jim Hackett is talking about. So uh, yeah, be proud of that man. He was a all American football player, really great gentleman, great scholar, and a uh, tremendous president under under underappreciated, uh, you know, one of the most underappreciated presidents I think there's, that we've uh, ever had. But, uh, so, I just apologize for interjecting, but uh, I had a couple personal stories there. And please with your host today is a scholar in presidential studies. So, we stole him from Grand Valley State to, to head up the museum and uh, 